This is our asset map. I'll briefly describe uh, what these red, what these different lines are. Uh, the red lines are our natural gas assets. Uh, blue are our products. Uh, at the very top there, you'll see the coaching pipeline system that is currently a propane system. Um, on the far right is a plantation pipeline system that is a product pipeline refined petroleum products. It supplies uh, all major East Coast airports for jet fuel. Uh, specific to the state, uh, we employed about 220 individuals uh, last year here in the state. Um, you can see there the uh, taxi, the amount of property taxes we pay, pay to the state as well as to uh, the specific county. Uh, uh, we own and operate about 5,000 miles of pipeline in Arizona, and those are listed uh, right there. Um, what I will do is I will be available to answer any questions afterward, but what I'd like to do now is turn it over to Corey Hartman to discuss the specifics surrounding the development uh, here in the area. the uh, project team. Now this is not the entire project team that's been pared down a bit, but we try to emphasize the folks that you might encounter here in the field um, on occasion. And so to start with, um, I'm a subsurface engineering manager. I'm actually based out of Houston. There are a few people on my team, um, namely Travis Kelsey, who is our geologist who we got here at Parker Drilling Wells, um, as well as um, uh, Carlos, who is our production engineer, and he helps us with the well testing. We also have Barry Swift, who you'll hear from in just a minute. He's our surface facility manager based out of Durango, Colorado. He has a team of folks um, that uh, some are actually based here. You'll note the two boxes in, in gold. Uh, one is Jim Smith, who's based in Springerville. The other is Tom White, who you might know, uh, who's a longtime resident of, of Pine Top. So just an overview of the St. John's field location, you'll see there's a, a boundary. It sits between St. John's and Springerville. Um, we refer to the St. John's field as a geologic structure, but it's actually made up of two units. And one is the St. John's gas unit, which is what we'll talk about today. The other is called the Cottonwood Canyon unit, which sits on the New Mexico side. That dotted pink line is the, the state line. So this is just a notional rendition of our field development plan. You'll see in the end that um, one of the philosophies that we're trying to maintain is how do we develop this field and minimize the surface impacts? And so we're trying to keep our core development area to a smaller footprint than the actual unit size. It's about 40% of the actual unit size that we have available to develop on. Um, in the middle of the drawing in, in pink and orange is the TEP power plant. And that's kind of our line of demarcation. We refer to the field development plan Everything in the pink is what we call the north area, or phase two. Everything in the orange is the south area, or phase one. So most of the early development is going to be happening in that orange area. Uh, all the boxes represent well locations, and each of those wells will be hooked to a manifold that will serve us four to six wells. And then those wells will go <coughs> to flow lines back to the main trunk lines, which are represented in the green. Um, all told, we'll have about 160 well locations. Um, and several miles of flow lines and the gathering system, which Barry will touch on later. So uh, you may or may not know, we've just recently received full board approval in late March to proceed. So I know that we've been present, Kinder Mark Morgan's been present out here for a while, and it seems like maybe nothing's been happening. Things are going to start happening now. Um, so at the project level, we're doing several stakeholder engagements, such as this one. Uh, we've put some long lean equipment orders in, and we're working on our norm management plans. Um, if you're familiar with the oil and gas industry, norm is naturally occurring radioactive materials. Um, it's, it's a typical part of our business, but we just want to make sure that we keep our workers safe, and so that's something that we're addressing. On the subsurface side, we're getting ready to execute a nine well program. We expect the rig to come into the field later this month. Uh, we are also planning our plug and abandonment program as part of our unit obligation to the state. We need to uh, plug the wells that we don't intend to use as producers. And we're also planning on some formation water disposal wells, and so we're looking into 
Where might we place those? What does the design look like? And going through the permitting steps. From a field facility standpoint, we're getting all our permits and surveys in place. We're negotiating our power supply, uh, working on water source goals that we'll need for our operations, and doing the site prep work for our central facility. And then there's a Lobos pipeline, uh, who is not represented today, but they're working on their EIS and uh, doing public outreach meetings as well, primarily on the New Mexico side, but I think they've done some engagement in Arizona. This is just a look at what the reservoir looks like. Uh, on the left-hand side is a log, which is called a formation image log. And what we're looking at is the fractured granite rock. Um, that's about 3,000 feet. And so what this shows us is we believe that the, the fractures are driving the gas production. And so we're going down and drilling into, and doing open hole completions to try to access as many fractures as we can. On the right-hand side is an actual picture of the cores that we've pulled from one of our wells, and you can also see evidence of the natural pressure system in the forest. So the subsurface <laughs> team objectives for 2014, we have just finished a geophysical study, which is going to help us be more predictive about well placement. Um, and similarly, we're trying to develop predictive models with our petrophysics, our logs, and other correlations. We're looking to evaluate the reservoir in the northern part of the field because we don't have as many data points out there. We're trying to further understand the water drive characteristics of the aquifer. We're not sure how much water production to expect, and that would be very helpful to know. And then we're also trying to verify what does our, our production decline look like and how, how long do we expect these wells to last. Um, we're also trying to drill different types of wells around the development area boundaries, um, which could help us to further decrease our footprint. And finally, with all the new information we hope to get from the nine well program this year, we'll be updating the field development plan. That will be a dynamic um, process for the next few years. And as I mentioned, we have a multi-year drilling program. We expect to have about 160 wells, plus or minus. I guess what I would like you to take away from this is that you'll notice that most of the development is in the south in the next few years, and then it converts over to the north area. As that's consistent with that I showed earlier. We do have a list of the wells that we plan to drill this year, and we have uh, departments in place and working with the state land department to get surface use permits before we drill our locations. And with that, I'm going to hand over to Barry to talk about the surface facilities. central processing facility, which will consist of separation, compression, dehydration. Uh, that central processing facility will take the gas from the wells, compress it up to 2,100 pounds, and put it in the pipeline. <coughs> also uh, associated with the project will be new roads. We'll have uh, access roads, uh, some existing road improvements, and then we'll be adding some new roads where necessary. Um, duplicate slide, I, I've already covered most of this uh, information previously. Um, it really just shows the two development areas, uh, the drilling uh, program, well flow lines, and um, trunk lines. Uh, so surface, uh, surface plan for phase one. Um, this is a map of the phase one development, which is 
south of the Spring Rail Generating Station. 